Hi everyone, my name is Andres Biondi. I am a PhD student at the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department in the, at the University of Massachusetts in Lowell. I work on the Professor Shin Wen Wan, uh, and our lab research focuses in the area of fiber optics sensors. Specifically, we develop sensors for the uh, medicine industry as well as the structural health monetary uh, industry. Today, he, I'm here to present our project, which is titled Fiber Optic Sensing Technology for a Structural Health Monitoring of a Bridge. Even though I am the one he presented today, this job was done by the collaboration of different departments as well as our industry partner. Now, what do we want to uh, develop a system for a structural health monitoring? Well, the aging of a civil infrastructure can have a big impact on the economy of a nation. For that reason, methods are needed to continuously monitor the aging process of the structure. And this process is what is known as a structural health monitoring. The current, the current techniques that are being used nowadays, it is using a, what's known as a strain gauges. However, strain gauges only provide localized signal, which means is if we want to know what's happening between the distance of two strain gauges, we will not have that information. For that reason, fiber optics has become very popular because uh, with fiber, we're able to install uh, the cable along or throughout the whole infrastructure, providing and creating a distributing sensing method, which uh, can provide a more a general picture, a more precise picture of what's, of what's happening in the infrastructure. Now, the, uh, there are different methods that can be use uh, uh, throughout, they can be used with fiber optics and they will all depend on what's the, um, what are the, uh, the requirements of the project. However, today he, uh, in this project we're using what's known as a BOTDR, which stands for Brilliant Optical Time Domain Reflectometry. And the way it works is the following. So here we have the controller, which was provided by, which was purchased uh, from a company in Switzerland called Omnisense. So this controller is connected to the fiber. So this fiber was embedded into a textile which then was glued uh, with epoxy at the bottom of a bridge. Um, so once the complete process of installation is done, a laser pumps light through the fiber. And then some of the bad scatters that happens, uh, that happens such as the brilliant frequency comes back to the lay, uh, to the controller, and then since the brilliant frequency is directly proportional to um, to the uh, strain and temperature, uh, the controller performs a signal processing and provides what is the current um, temperature or strain uh, with one meter of spatial resolution. Now. The general system, how the um, how the structure, how this structural health monitoring process works, is the following. Because as I mentioned, we have the BOTDR and we have an operator which goes every certain amount of time. It can be every one week, two weeks, three months, depending on the requirement of the project. It will perform scan. Now, once the scans are retrieved, uh, the operator will uh, analyze the data and it will conclude two answers: either no change in the strain, uh, uh, on no change of the strain in the signal has happened, or there is a strain change happening in the signal. If no change has happened, the data is saved, and uh, the operator concludes that no further actions are needed, and then waits until the next time the uh, assessment or the scan has to be taken. If there is change in the signal, then the um, operator can conclude that uh, further investigations are needed. Unfortunately, uh, this investigation can be narrow in scope since the uh, BOTDR or BOTDA provides a uh, resolution of one meter and allows to pinpoint where the possible um, damage can be, can, can be located or can be situated. Now, uh, we already have uh, uh, applied the first prototype. So this prototype, as I mentioned previously, was embedded on, the, on a textile. Then a textile was placed at the bottom of a bridge, and this bridge was located at the, uh, uh, in New Hampshire, uh, close to the Somophone River. Uh, so we go every certain amount of time to collect data and to analyze the performance of the sensor. Uh, and what we hope to see is that the strain hasn't changed throughout a specific uh, period of time. 
So the plus that you can see here is actually what it looks like uh, in terms of the brilliant frequency over the distance. So the total length of the fiber sensor is about uh, 22 meters. Uh, in here you can see two tests. The first one that provides a current a baseline in which nothing happened on the bridge, and the second test which provides a signal uh, during the uh, during a train event. Basically, the train was passing over the bridge. So as we can see, we are we see a small spike or increment in the uh, in the shift of the of the frequency, which tells us that the bridge is under a specific strain event, uh, which in this case was the uh, the train going uh, going over the bridge. Uh, and figure B actually shows you uh, the strain difference between the train and when no event happened. As we can see, we have a specific spike happening during that model. So basically, the system is straightforward. Uh, what we want to see is we want to do continuously monitoring. We don't want to see any, uh, any type of change or uh, change in the behavior of the signal. For example, here's a small illustration of how, what we would like to see. So once the installation is done, we collect the signal and this signal looks like this. And when we come back after six months, we would like to see the same thing. If that happens, then uh, we have passed a check. We have a check, uh, you know, a check bar which says nothing is happening. The, the, in this case, the bridge is, is in good condition. However, if we come back after six months and then we see some, so, something like this, then that gives us a warning in which something might be able to happen and then there is more need of investigation. We can conclude that the proposed sensitive textile demonstrates its capabilities to monitor strain changes on infrastructure. Additionally, its ability for long-range monitoring makes this technology attractive for different industry. Further investigation on the performance during different weather conditions is currently in progress. Uh, with this research, we would like to investigate and demonstrate how the, uh, how the sensor will behave during a period of one year uh, on the different type of weather conditions. Additionally, I would like to uh, include that this type of technology doesn't have to be used only on, uh, on infrastructure uh, monitoring. It can be used in the area of oil, gas, security, bri uh, bridges, roads, and railways. And with that addition, I conclude my presentation for today. If you have any question below is a contact of, the, of my advisor, uh, please feel free to email her with, and with any question that you might have about this presentation. Thank you so much for uh, your um, for your attention.